Hello streamers. Today we are talking about video set background ideas. I'm going to give you some tips. We are going to talk about the pros and cons of green screen. We're going to actually be interactive today because the great thing is this is a set undone and you have the chance today to influence my set background. So I'm going to walk you through some tips and visualize some of this stuff for you. But uh, I also want your ideas. So bring them on today. And the reason that it's so, so very important that you have a great background is one, if you do it right, it adds instant credibility. It goes along with the professional production value that you're trying so hard to present to your audience, right? Because that instant credibility can do wonders for you. But on the second hand, <laughs> the second thing is that it actually also gives you the chance to bring your personality into your background, into your show. And because it's in your background, because it's a visual thing instead of a, a, a sp spoken thing, you actually can create instant connection, right? You've got instant credibility, but you've also got instant connection based on the personality that goes into your background if you work at it. It doesn't take a lot and it is an ever going process. So don't feel like it has to be done from the get go. Obviously mine is not. So this is what we're talking about today. I cannot wait to dive in with you. If you're new around here, please do type new in the comments. Um, and if you are new, by the way, we did have a new person. Coach Frenchie uh, said they were new during the countdown. Thank you so much for being here. And Kyle Cook is new member on YouTube. Uh, first stream as a new member. So thrilled to have you. And if you are new, you don't know who I am. My name is Luria Petrucci and I'm from Live Streaming Pros where we help you create professional live video that is uniquely you. This show is a show I do in partnership with Ecamm and we help you get the, get the most out of your live streams every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Welcome to Go Live Now. We've got some newbies in the house. We've got uh, Reginald. Thank you so much for being here. Al is old. <laughs> Hi, Kyle. We've got the Tipsy Toaster in the house. We've got Rizwan. I, if I missed you, I'm so sorry. Thank you all for being here. I love to see new faces and I would encourage you to not be a lurker today if you are new talk to me, participate, because like I said, this is an interactive stream today where you actually get to participate in the build out of my set. Not that I'm building it out today, but you get to give me some ideas. Hello, Willie. All right. So um, real quick, there is a free PDF of 10 set background ideas that I want you to download. Um, it looks like this uh, and where we give you some behind the scenes of our own students, right? And we tell you exactly what the behind the scenes, the first, like the, the initial, what it looks like. And then like this is Donna's, it's, it's in the basement. It's an unfinished basement, but this is what her video actually looks like. She's got some personality in there. It looks professional. And so I go over 10 different students um, with you and walk you through how much it cost, they give you a tip of their own, and later down here, I'm just, it's gonna take a while to down, come down here, we also have some tips, some hacks that our students have provided for you guys. Um, and so I love to see the different hacks uh, from our students, so we've included that in the PDF as well. So I would love for you to download that so that you can continue to get your brain going for your own ideas. That is at uh, livestreamingpros.com slash ideas. The link is in the description. So let's dive in to the tips themselves. Tip number one, I want you to use caution when it comes to green screen. 
All right, green screen is a big thing. Who, who uses, ah, <laughs> nice. Yes, <laughs> your hack was in there. Um, so who uses a green screen currently or has thought about using a green screen? Um, hands up in the comments. So a lot of people do and it's, it's okay for you to do. However, I really want you to use caution and be aware of the downsides of green screen. Now, Ecamm Live actually does a great job with keying out green screen. They give you some templates to use, um, but, <clears throat> but um, when you do use green screen, it gives you the, it gives you more, excuse me. It's, we're, we're doing the stream earlier today. By the way, I do have to run at like 9.40, I have to be out of here. So we're gonna have to like just go through this because we have fire alarm testing going on in this building. And this girl, you can't see her. <laughs> she will not stand for that. Um, okay, yes. And I have an Elgato green screen as well, Nadim. And I love that thing. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, but when you do green screen, a lot of times, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get a green halo effect around your hair and your shoulders. Um, but it absolutely uh, can also give you kind of an amateur, <clears throat> an amateur look if you put the wrong thing in the background or if your perspective is off, um, meaning you look much bigger or smaller than the couch in the background, right? Because this is a real couch, it doesn't look weird. <laughs> but if I had a couch and it was like this big or this small, that perspective is off, right? So I want you to just use caution when you are doing green screen and just put some forethought into it. If you wanna use green screen for some goofy, funny things, then totally fine. Um, and if you do actually use it, <laughs> then, um, then just make sure that you put some effort into making it look really good. And I'm gonna have a different video all about green screen as well coming up soon. I always think of Sean Cannell when I say that. <laughs> coming up soon. <laughs> All right, tip number two. Wait, hold on. Before I move on to tip number two, uh, I just, oh, Paul is angry that I'm not using green. Oh, not angry, just disappointed. I'm so sorry. So the art of relationships says I've thought about a green screen and just uh, bought a blue and green screen. Okay, so if you're gonna do that, then make sure it's lit correctly. Make sure that whatever you put behind you is um, not gonna make you look amateur. And you just kind of have to look at it from a third party perspective and get out of your own brain for that. Uh, the background is a, uh, is a good topic. Thank you, I've been waiting for this training. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. All right, let's go uh, to tip number two, which is to make it look professional, right? At the beginning of this video, I talked about we want two different things out of our set background. We want it to give us instant credibility, uh, which is the professionalism side of things. Uh, and then we also want it to, we want to give it, we want it to give us personality so that it creates instant connection. So we want instant credibility and instant connection. So those are our next two tips. So uh, make it look professional. All I mean by that is that it looks good. <laughs> Um, because it gives you instant credibility, it's, it's not just the background, by the way, it's the, that's the camera, it's the lights, it's the microphone. Well, the microphone is all audio, but in terms of the look and feel, it's also the graphics that you put on screen, right? So things like this, these are the different things that make your video get that instant credibility with the professionalism. And we at Live Streaming Pros do teach you step by step how to create a video studio for live video or recorded video that gives you that pro look. That's at livestreamingpros.com slash studio. Um, that link is in the description as well. But what I mean by professional is I want it to just look good, right? I want it to, uh, I had, I forgot to mute my, my computer, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't want it to look cluttered. No dirty laundry back there. Uh, pick stuff up. All right, here's where we get a little interactive. Hopefully you can hear me because I'm about to go back here. So you notice this, this is not where it usually is. And I left my set my, which is my living room, by the way, this is all my living room, uh, because I'm in a small studio apartment. 
And so I left it like I left it last night. The, I, was, I was lounging here. There's a blanket here that Abby was sitting on. And usually I move this over here. So just think through what is in your background. So I'm gonna go fix this right now. There you go. Now it looks a little cleaner, right? And that isn't a huge difference, but every little thing matters, right? Um, and then also we see Abby here, and I do that intentionally. Uh, so usually we try and make her like stand out. I'm gonna have our own Abby cam. She's gonna have her own lighting. <laughs> We've gotta do something, right? Yes, cable management, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to cable management. Your mom was right, <laughs> Caleb. <laughs> Pick up <laughs> the stuff in the living room or in your bedroom or make your bed. <laughs> okay, so um, th that's the first thing in terms of making it look professional is you just look for what looks messy. Now, the second thing is um, lighting. So. My, because this is a set background in progress, I do not have what I need back there. You can see it's dark over here, it's dark in here. I've got these windows blasting in the sun and in the afternoon if I record video, that light is just shining in. And so I'm constantly having to mess with my ISO and my f-stop and the lighting adjustment. <clears throat> Every time I go live or shoot a video right now, until I get light blocking curtains in here, I have to make adjustments each and every time, which is so freaking annoying and often leads to excuses not to do it. Who's been there, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, okay, so I actually dry all my laundry in my studio office. It's always positioned off to the side. As long as it's off to the side, who cares, right? Um, and also like this, this is my desk. The camera seems to be falling recently because it's it definitely something's going on with my camera. I'm gonna have to tighten it up. But you see like this stuff that's just laying on my desk. This is my little phone mount and my tripod and this is the Logitech camera. Get that out of here. And nobody needs to see your cables or your extra stuff, right? So speaking of light blocking curtains, I actually did get some light blocking curtains uh, in here. And we're gonna kind of move into tip number three right now with personality um, because I wanted my, um, my house, like I wanted my home to be in a Japanese modern theme. And so that's what I'm building. I've got the wood going on this, this desk that I work at and have my studio equipment at, um, my Ecamm control center. I like saying that. Um, <laughs> by the way, I'm working on some really cool videos for you guys about my studio setup. It's not done yet, but I cannot wait to share with you guys. Um, okay. So I went with like a cherry blossom type of, uh, uh light blocking curtain and I got these in and Hey, Mr. The shag carpet is super beneficial. Everybody's calling it snow because <laughs> it looks like snow, um, but it's super soft and it helps with the echo in here because I'm all brick, I'm all windows, I've got a lot of echo. So this is a huge rug that um, helps with some of that uh, audio, the audio issues. Um, all right, so these came in and I was like, yes, I finally have light blocking curtains because they took a while. And um, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna yell, hopefully you guys can hear me. <laughs> okay, so originally I, I measured them and they were going to be coming up to about here. Can you even see me? <laughs> here. They were gonna come to here and then they actually came up to like here. So <laughs> that was too short. <laughs> I did not like that. So uh, I would love your ideas on what light blocking curtains to go with. Should I go with white or is that too much with 
the white rug probably. Should I go with, what color should I go? Nice to put cameo. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's one thing, light blocking curtains. I love this uh, picture frame here because uh, it's green and it pops and that's what I want you to look for. Uh, so, This is a picture that was given to me by an old friend, Scott Coplin, and it's gorgeous and it's HDR. Uh, it's waterfalls, which is totally me. Like I love to hike and I love waterfalls and all of that. Plus I thought, oh, that would look so good in the background because of the pop color. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna have a place for it. So I'm trying to figure that one out. And I'm just walking you through all of this so you guys can see this is not just a one and done deal. Like this stuff takes a little bit of effort and time and it's okay to just do what you got because that's what I'm doing. And then you can kind of add to it, right? A pop of a mustard yellow or something. <laughs> I see where you're going with that, Caleb. Um, white curtains are fine with a colorful band at the bottom. Uh, green would be awesome to highlight the painting. See, I can't, I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. I'm not great with design either. So the red, exactly, the red pops. Yeah, and that's what you want to think about is popping. <laughs> you want your set to pop. One, because it just looks good. Two, because it attracts attention. So when you have a set design that the colors pop or something is like visually attractive, uh, people or people like need to stop and see it. So that's one thing to consider. Now, because it's dark, I want to add some lighting. Hold on. All right. This is the light I have. And as you can see, it, it, it helps separate from the wall, from the, the couch, but it's not really doing a great job. It's kind of bleh, because there's so much wall. What I need are different LED strips probably that will go back there. And this couch actually, chair, couch, love seat. I never know what to call it. It's custom made. So it's like, I don't know what this is. Uh, <laughs> this actually has shelves that are built in between, so right there, uh, in like it, between the wall and the couch itself, the back of it, uh, there are, there's a shelf. So I can, I can put LED strip lights here, but I need something to kind of fill all of that, right? And hopefully this is like helpful for you to see how all of this gets put together. So I can mess with this light. At least it's offering some, some segmentation or some uh, separation from the wall and the couch, but it's definitely not doing the job. And I, I know that a lot of people have trouble with like, well, which light do I get? And that's what I want you to really think about, right? Uh, yeah, I do too. This, uh, the cherry blossom print is great. Uh, but here's the other thing. I'm thinking now about going with a different, like a, a plain color. And I was also thinking about leaving these sheer curtains. Up. I can't, I can't point. <laughs> I was look, thinking about leaving the sheer curtains on top of the light blocking curtains. Cause I think it might look cool if there's like a, if it is a color, it just kind of subdues it because I'm going to put terrariums. And this is where my color of green can pop, my pop of green can come in. So I'm gonna put terrariums like up here. Those will be smaller, but they'll have some color pop in there and it will uh, be hanging off of like a tree branch. Remember, I'm going with the whole like Japanese modern theme. Um, so, I want, so I want those natural like woods in, in here and everything. So we'll, we'll have a tree branch of some kind kind of hanging there. And then these will be hanging off of that. So the lighting has to accent these plus give me separation. 
And I think that with this, I think just everything kind of, I, I think I'm gonna just do a solid color, but I'm totally, totally open. Light blue or light gray, that could, that could definitely work. Um, <laughs> No, no train in the background, Paul. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I love the shears and you could use lighting in between. For That's a, that's a good point too. I totally could do that. Uh, green against the red brick will be invisible for colorblind people. Good point. Didn't think about that. Uh, I love, see, this is why I love the interactivity, right? Uh, patterned curtains in the brick wall might be too busy. Exactly. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Like when I, when I got these up, I was like, I don't know if they'll, they'll kind of clash with some of the other stuff going on, right? I've got the, well, this isn't, this pillow isn't staying, but yeah. So I've got to like, I've got to think about all of those things and kind of do it a little bit at a time. Okay. So Callie spoke out of turn and said that I was going to, tell you what this thing is. I wasn't going to, but now I have to because she put it on Instagram. <laughs> so I've been teasing you. I've been teasing you about this piece of wood. What is it going to be? And everybody can, nah, there were lots of ideas. Uh, <laughs> there were lots of ideas. Um, and it was originally going to be a coffee table. However, are you ready? Drum roll, please. Drum roll. This is actually going to become a bookshelf. So I'm going to have uh, some book or some like three shelves here. And it's going to look like this, but you can't quite see it because the lighting, uh, so it'll be like tilted. That thing is heavy. <laughs> I need to go to the gym or something. Um, but it's going to actually be tilted like this uh, on a solid block of wood. One of my biggest issues here is I cannot drill into the brick. And uh, so I have to like keep things off hanging off of hanging from the wall. So yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are making me work hard today. Uh, that, that was a teaser. Yes, I've been talking to our Alita participants about uh, tease, a tease um, and how you involve your audience in something to come. Well, I've been teasing you guys about what this might be. And, um, and then here we go. But now, you'll, now you know what it's supposed to become. And then when I actually get it made, uh, then that will like, we'll have a big reveal of it, right? So having your audience involved, and that's a great, uh, great lesson to add here, Andy, thank you. Uh, having your audience involved in the process and the setup of your studio is super powerful because it will allow them to kind of be emotionally invested and also you guys are giving me great ideas. Thank you. <laughs> right? Um, so there you go. Like those are the things, the tips that you need to know. Three tips that will help you get much better results with your set background. And I'm really hating this right here. What do you guys think? Like that just is bugging the heck out of me because it's so like spotted. It's just like so condensed. Uh, so we do have a ton of questions. Remember, uh, live streaming pros.com slash ideas will get you this uh, set background idea. So it's uh, video studio set background ideas and uh, hacks as well. So uh, go download that, uh, get more ideas where I kind of like really break it down for you. Uh, Carol says, I have blinds from the window in front of me to control light with my lighting setup. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Um, yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly, Matt. It was definitely a good thing. Um, so I also have on, on the other side of my, of my uh, camera, I have another whole wall of, of windows and those have the same sheer windows here, right? 
I am hoping, 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 hoping that I don't have to cover those up. But just to be fully transparent, I may have to, right? So I'm gonna start here, see how consistent that is throughout the day. And then I'm gonna have to, if it's still inconsistent lighting throughout the day, I'm gonna have to block those windows as well, which will suck, but I will make it work. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> so many great ideas. Do it, um, do one thing a week, right? Do one thing every time you go live. Keep it, keep it going. And there is no reason why your set background has to be the same once you start from when you stop streaming ever or do ever video. Like it changes and it, and it adjusts all the time. And remember, along with the personality, while mine is more like a home design, a lot of our students do things like what my co-host at Live Streaming Pros does. Um, he puts like Marvel things in the background and things that he cares about. I have to show you my bourbon journey, hold on. Um, I love this one. He, so uh, my bourbon journey has all kind, like just bourbon. <laughs> like this is, this is what his, uh, his video looks like. Amazing, right? And that kind of thing, when we're talking about personality, whether you're into Marvel or you're into Star Wars or you're into painting uh, or you're into crafts or you're into bourbon, <laughs> then um, put your personality into it. In my case, I definitely needed it to be my home as opposed to just a video set like I've had before. And so I wasn't willing to put just a whole bunch of stuff in the background. I wanted to design it around that Japanese modern theme um, so that it was still my personality, right? And I'm putting things back, I'm putting things in here that are custom made. Everything going into my uh, home is custom made. Uh, it's not bought from a store, all of this, except for the rug. The rug is from Amazon and the curtains will be from Amazon, <laughs> but you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, uh, Damon, oops, Damon says new, woohoo! Always great content video, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, any tips, and I know I have a bunch of uh, questions that I'm gonna come back to that were uh, asked before, but Todd is wanting to know any tips on a flexible background set that can be quickly switched up for different shows and topics? Yeah, so if you have the capability to do this, Excuse me, hold on. Wow, I don't know what's going on with me today. I guess I didn't drink enough water. But yeah, so one of the things that you can do is um, have rolling backgrounds. So you build like a rolling wall, just sheetrock on wheels, essentially. Build out a set and then you can roll that off and then roll another one in. That's if you have the space for that. Um, if you don't, and if you need it just like a wall, then um, what I would do for that is shelves. Focus on like shelving so that you can take things off and then put different things on, right? So you have a box that you keep uh, one topic idea or one topic or one show. Uh, all of the things are in a box and then you like swap in and out every time you do a show. Unfortunately, that's not a great idea. You know, it's not like the easiest thing in the world, but, um, but it, it is uh, definitely possible. So I don't think I could ever cover my windows. I like looking into the woods too much. I totally agree. And that's the thing is like, I, I love windows. I love light. I need that in my life. So I have to build it out so that I have the light blocking capabilities for the videos. And I also have my needs taken care of because if I'm in the dark all the time, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm just out, I'm depressed, I don't, I, I'm not happy, like all of the things, so. Um, okay, so good, I'm glad you're loving it. Who else is loving this live? I'm keeping an eye on the time, I've got 10 more minutes with you. Uh, so let me go through these questions. Uh, let's see, um, are you, uh, oh, uh, Sammy asked, are you gonna ask Callie to paint a portrait of Abby uh, and put it in your background? Okay, so <laughs> here, hold on, I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right, right back. <laughs> so
So when I was moving, I found this picture <laughs> of Abby, and it's from when she was younger, obviously. She's like uh, much, much younger because she has a lot more white now. But <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I need a little like shrine. And then we like have like a little shrine area where Abby sits and there's this picture. <laughs> I know, isn't she so cute? <laughs> so I don't know, but that's a great idea, Sammy. That was my idea, but I love the idea of Callie painting something uh, of, of, of Abby because she's a fantastic painter. Okay, <laughs> um, I know, right? It would be awesome if I could do that. <laughs> but I will have an Abby cam, so that's something is definitely coming around that. Jeff says, how about photo backdrops like photographers use? Absolutely. Those can work fantastic. And um, we have a lot of students who just use a single color backdrop. Um, so photographers have those paper backdrops, different colors. Um, and if you choose a color that pops, not white, I would not recommend just going plain white unless we want to go back to the Apple days of, of old. Um, but uh, that doesn't quite pop in the newsfeed on Facebook or in, you know, on YouTube. So I would choose a color that's just going to get attention if you do that. Light it well, maybe get, um, get a light specifically to separate you from the background. And that will do that will do just fine. It won't have personality, but it can be a very good option. Okay, uh, is the plank to make Abby an assault course? <laughs> Andy, you're a dork. Paul, have I been to Japan? Yes, twice. Um, so I've been to Australia, Germany, Canada. I'm not sure that counts. Um, <laughs> I love my Canadian friends. Um, uh, let's see, Germany, uh, Lon uh, the UK, London. Uh, let's see, where else? Uh, Japan twice. Um, I think that about covers it. I feel like there's something else, somewhere else. But uh, so, yeah, and I fell in love with Japan. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of like in the Japanese modern uh, thought process here. Let's see. Uh, what are your thoughts about using Philips lighting, color changing lights? Uh, definitely. Color changing lights are fantastic. Hue lights are amazing. A little bit expensive, right? But... <laughs> no, that's not going to become a shirt idea. <laughs> no. Um, so uh, Philips Hue lights or any color changing lights are fantastic. And as I choose my lights, I will walk you through what I'm choosing and why I'm choosing it. And I know that we need to deliver some, uh, some content. It'll probably go in our studio course um, at livestreamingpros.com slash studio. It'll probably go there because uh, it's something our students have specific, specifically been asking for is training on choosing a light. But I will do some free content around that as well uh, about like what lights do what for you, right? Because this light isn't doing the trick. So how do you know without buying a whole bunch of lights? So we're gonna, we're gonna take care of you on that side of things. Greg says, why not have your mic in shot for less room noise? Is that a streamer thing? Um, it's just a personal preference thing. So my mic is right here. So it's just out of camera shot. Uh, and um, you can totally do that. I personally do not like uh, my, my mic in the shot. I like it when other people have it. I just don't want that to be my look, right? So it's just a choice. Carol says, uh, have no choice but to use green screen background. Upstairs with ethernet, my office is an A-frame and my bathroom would be behind me. Advice for structural problem I cannot change. Um, just work with what you got, right? And so um, I, I guess the question is, does it have a door or uh, is, can you flip uh, the position, can you like face the bathroom and what's behind you on the other side? Um, just look at all possible options. And if green screen is your best option, then that's fine. Just make sure that you're not looking amateur, you know, just put a little bit of extra effort into that. <laughs> Caleb, you're cracking me up right now. Um, Caleb is from uh, Ecamm's team, just so you guys know. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mark says, hey, Luria, when you have a lot of natural light uh, coming into a room, would you ever try to use the natural light rather than totally block it out with curtains? No. For temporary setups, sure. But 
if you are ever, no, because the lighting changes. Um, so when I'm shooting at 10 a.m. versus 3 p.m., I have to change ISO, I have to change, I have to adjust all of my things on the camera, I have to adjust the uh, amount of light that I have. I have to do a whole lot of work and that's not worth it. What we want for you and what we teach you in our DIY Studio uh, course is how to build a set it and forget it studio. You flip one switch called the party on switch and you are good to go. So you do not want, if at all possible, to have to change things up, right? Um, and so that's why we recommend controlling the light. But also, let's say you're like, well, I only shoot at 10 a.m. ever or whatever time. It's always consistent. Think about this, winter versus summer much different light, right? So you've got to, you know, think, think about that. <laughs> yeah. That's what we talk about when we do custom studio builds. Uh, by the way, we do have a custom studio build going on right now. Uh, and I don't have permission yet to say who it is, but hopefully we can share that. I know we are capturing some behind the scenes footage for you. Uh, but that's, that's the kind of where we came up with that concept because we needed our clients uh, to be to, for it to be easy on them. And even Pat Flynn um, just like t t connected it to like Google, uh, um, Google Home or whatever. And uh, he says, uh, Google, party on <laughs> or whatever, or Alexa or whatever it was. And uh, that turns all, everything on just by voice, not even a switch. So you can do fun things like that. Uh, what, am I, what lighting am I using for ambient background? Uh, Juan, uh, right now I'm just using the outside light coming in from the windows, but um, like I said, I'll, I'll walk you guys through different lighting options for the background specifically. Um, do, 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 do. What are your thoughts on a black backdrop? Luis, I remember you saying you wanted this question answered. I'm glad you came back for it. What are your thoughts on a black backdrop? My setup is in the garage and I don't have many space, uh, much space. I would not do that unless you're going to do black backdrop with a colored light on it and it looks cool. I don't think it would look cool, um, but I would do a different color. Like I was saying earlier, get a pop of color in there. The more dark you are, not, you can be, you can have a dark look with a lot of color and still pop. But if you're just dark, then it's not going to be attractive to the viewers. So uh, I would suggest, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Mike, uh, coming in with a great idea for uh, Carol King, who has a structural like problem in the space, panel room dividers. Uh, you could totally do that. That's a fantastic idea. And then you can just put that in front of your bathroom, right? So move it in and out. And then at least you have something that looks good and designed, you know what I mean? Patrick says, too distracting if they change color during your live shoot. No, Patrick, that's a total personality choice. Um, if you want your colors to change, um, and I, we actually have a couple of students who do this and it looks great. Um, it's subtle enough, it's not like, Flashing, I would not recommend that, except for like what we do when we get super chats, our lights flash in David's studio at least. Um, and I'm thinking about maybe depending on what lights I do here, maybe not, but we'll see. But yeah, so like his uh, lights flash when we get a super chat and that alerts everybody, the audience, us, all of the people that there has been a super chat. So that kind of thing is great. But if you're gonna have a consistent changing over the, sh the period of the show, I would highly recommend that you do it in a very subtle length of time. So like every 30 seconds or every two minutes or you know something like that. Okay, uh, any advice? Diego says, for using trading screens, monitors in my background, I think my lighting is affecting how they're seen on camera. They do. So monitors are super, super tough in a background. What you have to do uh, with monitors is um, tilt them. 
<laughs> so that they don't catch the light. Because if you have them in a normal uh, position, then uh, they're gonna catch the light coming in from, uh, from the front foreground and then you'll have just a shine. So if you tilt it, get it onto a rotational uh, mount, uh, if you tilt it forward, that will look a lot better. Um, and it doesn't have to be a major tilt, it just has to be enough to get the light uh, shine off of the screen. So that's, that's one, uh, you can do different things, but uh, picture frames also speak. There's my alarm to, to leave you. <laughs> for the fire alarms. Fire alarms are about to start. Ah! But let me finish my thought real quick. And those of you who haven't gotten the set ideas workshop or the set ideas PDF, it's completely free. Go download that livestreamingpros.com slash ideas. That link is in the description. Uh, that'll help you get going even further beyond this stream. Um, but what I was going to say is picture frames. If you have picture frames in the uh, background, take the glass out so that you don't have to, because you can't tilt those very easily if they're hanging on the wall. So just take the glass out and you're good to go with the reflection. So, uh, all right. <laughs> yes, I know. I have to get Abby. Wait, the, I have to get Abby to a quiet place. We're going to go to the park and work. <laughs> uh, yes, Carol. Uh, you can thank uh, Mike Short for that one. That was awesome. This, <laughs> yes. I have an alarm for the alarms coming up. All right. I do have to run. I thank you so much for your great ideas today. Amazing questions. I hope this has been super helpful for you to get your set background going. And I look forward to seeing pictures. Uh, if you're in the Ecamm group, guys, please do tag me and share ideas in the set, the pictures that you're doing or that you're putting together of your background. So please do share pictures in the Ecamm group if they're okay with that at least and tag me so I can see the results of this stream. I love you all. Thank you so much. And uh, if you want to join me for a live Q&A tomorrow on the live streaming pros channels, that's at 10 a.m. Pacific. So we'll just do open Q&A then. And then uh, I believe Ecamm has a packed full week of uh, programming as well. So check out their programming schedule. All right. I will see you later. We're going to put our dancing shoes on. Ready? And dance this thing out. And I'm going to go save Abby's ears. <laughs> Bye.